Welcome to this Tutor to You Introduction Sociology topic video looking at Marxism. Marxism is often mentioned in association with sociology, but what exactly is Marxism? Marxism is a political, economic, and sociological perspective that is based on the ideas of Karl Marx. It is a structural conflict theory that suggests that there is class conflict in society between those with power and wealth and the workers. In this video, we're going to provide a brief overview of some of the ideas of Marx and why it remains an important theory in sociology. First of all, we need to explain who Karl Marx was. Marx was a historian and economist who argued that the process of industrialization had created a division in society between two social classes and that these classes were in constant conflict over the control of the means of production that is, factories, machinery, resources, and the capital that produces goods. Marx argued that the means of production were controlled by the bourgeoisie, or the ruling class, and they controlled the proletariat, or the working class. The means of production were essential to the economy, as they were used to produce the goods that people consumed. While the bourgeoisie controlled these factories, machinery, and resources, they needed the proletariat to work for them in order to supply the manpower to produce goods. Whilst there should have been a mutually beneficial agreement with the bourgeoisie paying the proletariat for their labour, Marx argued that the proletariat were exploited by the bourgeoisie by being paid low wages, particularly in comparison to the profits that the bourgeoisie would make from selling the goods made with the labour of the workers. Well, how did they do this? Marx argued that in a capitalist society, one where goods are exchanged for money, the only way that the proletariat could afford these goods was through selling their labour to the proletariat. As the bourgeoisie had control of the means of production, the proletariat could not produce goods for themselves, and so were forced to sell their labour in return for wages. However, these wages were set by the bourgeoisie and individual workers were left with the option of accepting low wages or being unable to support themselves and their families. This situation was made worse by the bourgeoisie's desire to maximise their profits, and so they would look to keep wages as low as possible. As workers were limited in their ability to work elsewhere, they had little option but to accept these low wages. This exploitation could have been addressed by workers bonding together to collectively bargain for higher wages, as was later seen in the trade union movement. They could threaten to withdraw labour, and this would harm the profits of the bourgeoisie. However, as the bourgeoisie controlled the economic infrastructure, it also allowed them to control society's infrastructure, that is, society's culture, legal systems, education and other social institutions. This enabled them to practice ideological control over the masses through passing on norms and values through religion, family and education that justified the exploitation of the proletariat, transmitting what Marx called false class consciousness, making the proletariat passive and docile and less likely to challenge society's inequalities as long as they could meet their basic needs in society. Despite providing the labour that resulted in the profits of the ruling class, the proletariat were taught that they were fortunate to be able to meet their basic needs. The control of social institutions was essential in justifying this inequality in society, as Marx argued that when the proletariat became aware of this exploitation, they would revolt and seize the means of production for themselves. However, the ideological control of the infrastructure made it harder for individuals to realise the extent of their exploitation. Marx's ideas can still be seen in action in contemporary society, which is why Marxism is still a relevant theory today. This is particularly the case when examining income inequality in the UK and the extent of in-work poverty. Many workers struggle to make ends meet today, and this is no small part to low wages, zero-hour contracts and the gig economy, whereby people are paid only for tasks completed, rather than being paid a set wage. 
Many sociologists examine these forms of exploitation in the workplace, applying basic principles that were introduced by Marx almost 180 years ago. However, there are many critics of Marx. His predictions of a revolution never came to pass, although many have argued that this is due to the ideological control of the ruling class rather than the lack of willingness on the part of workers. Furthermore, societies that applied some of Marx's ideas, such as the Soviet Union in the 20th century, often collapsed due to economic mismanagement and the failings of authoritarian rulers. Another criticism levelled at Marxism is the extent to which people are assumed to be passive and not willing to challenge inequality. More contemporary Marxists, what are called neo-Marxists, have criticised traditional Marxism for taking into account that individuals have free will and are either aware of their exploitation and take no action, or develop cultures of resistance that challenge social norms and values in other ways. That concludes this Tutor to You Introduction to Sociology topic video looking at Marxism. Thanks for watching.